Alrighty. So what I've done is I have got um, an exam that um, my husband and I wrote together over the holidays. And so it's a whole bunch of questions that you haven't seen before that's not in ZQA. So everyone is kind of seeing this for the first time. All right. So what we want to do, we're going to try and get through as many of these questions as possible. And as we go through, I'm going to talk about you know, how to answer the question, but also achieve merit and excellence. All right. Now, if you do have a device, um, there is a way. I've put the, there is a link that you can go to and load this up on the device if you want to view it on your own screen rather than viewing it on here. All right. Um, so that is there if that's what you'd like to do. All right. So there's just a bit.ly link that you can type in and that way you can have that there alongside. All right. So I'll give you guys a second just to, for those that want that. Come on in, girls. Grab yourself a seat. Okay. All good to go. All right. So, question number one. Um, we've got some data here about um, back in 2015, we had a referendum about whether or not to change the flag. Um, and so, these are five of the options that were given in the first round. So the first thing that they did was narrow down the choices that people submit and they narrowed it down to five and then they recorded how asked people across New Zealand, which one do you want to vote for? All right, if we were going to change, which one would you choose? So they, Erica has said, the statement is that Erica says that there are five options um, for changing the flag and therefore there is a 20% chance of being chosen. All right. So, do you agree with that statement? Is it actually a 20% chance? So, given that there's five choices, have we got a 20% chance? Okay. So, some people would say yes, some people would say no. What The question is why? Because that's what we're looking for, is our reasoning. How would we know whether it is one of the five? Good. So it's thinking about that idea as, is everything equally likely? So are all of these options equally likely? And to start with, Yes, we would say yes to start with, they are all equally likely. Um, so our answer in there is, is she correct? Well, we can say, sure, yep, she's correct um, for this one because, and that's what we're looking for, is the reason why. Um, and that's because each option um, is equally likely. Okay. However, you could say no, that's not true. And I would give you full marks for that as well, depending on the reason. All right. So if you said no, what would be a reason be to go with that? Mm. We could find that actually that one of them, for example, if I take that middle one, um, it might be that that particular flag appeals more to Māori um, voters. All right, so in that case, it wouldn't be equally likely because there might be some of that these appeal more to a particular type. So, for example, this one here, I know for me personally, I look at that and it reminds me a little bit about the South African flag. Okay, so that could be some reasons why it wouldn't be equally likely. All right, and what I'm looking for is that reason. All right, so as long as you can give me a reason, then I'd say, sure, that's great, and I'll give you a you alongside that um, and accept that as your answer. Okay. 
Yes, they have to give them a reason. They just say yes or no. No, no, they won't get it if they don't just say yes or no. Okay. All right. So that's the first question there. Then if I look at the next one. So we've got some information here. Before the referendum was done, they did some polling. Okay. Do you guys know what a poll is? So a poll is, um, like often before an election, they'll people will ring up you and say, oh, who do you think you're going to vote for? And they'll take a random sample of about a 1,000 people across New Zealand, and they just ring you up and ask you that one question. And so that's what a poll is. It's just somebody randomly ringing up people at random and asking that question. All right? Survey would be asking multiple questions. Poll is just when you've got one particular question. So they've gone and found information from 100 different people, and we've got our results down there. And then they've drawn this infographic. All right? So we need to think about this graphic here. It's misleading. But the question is why? Because we need to, if it wasn't misleading, then this data here should be represented on that picture there. Okay? So they should be representative. The data should be represented fairly. So what is it about this graph that means it's not represented fairly? Look at that. So we've got the percentages down the side. 36%, 12%, 4%, 8%, 40%. Does those images represent those percentages? Good. So if this data, if we took, the, if I had just got this data straight personally, I would just go straight to drawing a bar graph. That would be my first um, thing that I did. And so on my bar graph, I would have my A, B, C, D, E across the bottom, and I would say right percentages across the side. Um, so 36%, I would draw my first bar graph. Then I would have B at 12%, 4%, tiny down there. D is at 8%, so a little bit bigger, and E at 40%. So that's what I would expect my bar graph to be if the data was representative. All right, so that, that graph would be fine. But what's different about the, the other graph that we've got? If I look at this, the size of this compared to the size of that, does it look like there's a small difference between them or a large difference between them? Yeah, if I compare the E to the A, so comparing 36 to 40%, they should be fairly close, shouldn't they? 40%, 36%, they should be fairly close. But if I look over here, if I look at this graph here and that graph there, this one is a lot bigger than 4%. It doesn't look 4% bigger. And that's because our brains go, when we look at things, our brains look at area. And our brains are comparing how much area is physically coloured in by this graph here, and how much area is physically coloured in by that graph, and it compares the area. Yep. Same with if I was comparing the area of this 4%, my brain's looking at the whole area, not just the size of it. Okay, so on the, this graph here, all of these bars should be the same width. So because they're all the same width, the only difference between them is the height. And that's why it makes it a fair comparison, because the height is changing. But the width of those bars would be the same. Whereas on this graph, both the width is changing, as well as the height. Okay, both of those dimensions are changing in proportion. And that's what makes this not a fair comparison. Alright, so why is this infographic misleading? So what we want to be able to say is it's misleading because, and it's again, it's the why. That's what I'm giving you the marks for is the why. Okay, so it's misleading 
because um, the area is not proportional, is a fancy word, to the percentage. Okay. So what that's trying to say is that it's not the relativity of it. I'm comparing one with the other, they're relatively not the same. Okay. You could go on and talk about, instead of doing using those words, you could talk about how the width and the height are changing. So the width and the height changes, um, not just um, oh, not just the height. So something around the fact that we're out, we're looking and comparing the, the total area and versus the size of the percentages that they don't match up. Okay, does that make sense, guys? Okay. All right. So let's have a look at the next one. All right. So using that survey, so we've got our 100 voters, and we've got that, and so we want to know what's the chance, the probability, that they chose a flag with red on it. Okay, so they've given us the hint, and this is for, some schools don't print out these papers in colour, so if they print it out in black and white, they're telling us that flags A, B, and E have red. Yep, so we want to know what's the probability they chose a flag with red on it. So how many flags are there, and how many voters are there? 100. So from that 100, how many of them have voted for A or B or E? So we've got 36 for A, we've got 12 for B, and we've got 40 for E. Yep. Or you can do, the other way you could do it is those C and D add up to 12. So you could do 100 take away 12 rather than adding those three up. Yep. Um, so however you get to whatever it's going to be, what is it, 88 out of 100. Pardon? Um, that would be a good thing to do. In terms of marking, we won't penalise you at level one if you don't. Um, as a mathematics teacher, I would want you to, and um, you could write that either as 88 over 100, or you could change that, in fact, you can change that into a percentage, or you can write it as decimal, or you can supply that, fry that fraction to, was it 44 over 50, 22 over 25, okay? Any of those answers are acceptable. Okay, so when they use that word probability, or if they use the word proportion, that's another way to ask. So probability, proportion, they both mean the same thing. All right, and that's just reading straight off the table. So again, that's just going to be a, no, that's a multi-step process because you've had to do all probabilities because you've had to combine multiple together. That would actually get you an R. All right, so that would get you through to a merit because it's multi-step. Okay. Let's have a look at the next one. So in the newspaper, um, they to 2010, they asked some successful and famous New Zealanders, is it time to change the flag? And so we've got some data there about these particular people that were asked. So what percentage... Um, of these thought it was time to change the flag. Yeah. So which of those categories are we going to include? Yes. We're going to include the yes. Are we going to include anything else? No. 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 We're only interested in those that thought it was time. So in terms of the probability, probability is going to be 12 out of, now how many are there? 24. And if you leave the answer as that, I'm going to mark it wrong. Why am I going to mark that wrong? It has to be in a percentage. Yep. So if I use the word probability or proportion, you can write it as decimal, percentage, or fraction. Any of those is fine. But when I do say percentage, it explicitly has to be percentage. Okay. So in that case, do we know how to um, change it into percentage? Multiply by 100. Good. And that's going to give us 50%. Okay, so these are all nice straightforward ones. Um, 
so far. Now, give reasons why this survey might not give the same results as the flag referendum did. So in that one, 50% of people, from those people that were asked, 50% of them wanted to change the flag. When we asked the entire New Zealand, why might we get different answers? Absolutely. Absolutely. So if I look at the entire population of New Zealand, that is made up of different age groups, different ethnicities, um, different socioeconomic status, um, people that like sports versus those that don't like sports, etc., etc. So there's a huge mixture in the entire population. Whereas when we look at just that sample that was taken, that was a sample of only 24 people that were in that order of merit. Okay, are they representative? There is the key word, representative. Are those 24 people representative in their opinion of all of New Zealand? And the answer is no. So when you give the answer for this, depending on how much statistical ideas you put in there depends whether I'm going to give you an achieved um, or a merit for this one. Okay. So if you were just able to tell me that the, the um, people in the order of merit might think differently to the rest of the population of New Zealand, that would be an achieved level answer. Okay. If you can tell me that their opinion is not representative, that's what I want for the merit. So I want that statistical um, words and statistical concepts being embedded in this. All right. So what I would want you to be able to say is that the opinions, um, oh, spell opinion um, of people in the order of merit. Uh, not likely, and again, I'm just using that word, that, that phrasing. I'm just not likely. I can't say absolutely deaf. I can't prove it. I can't do disprove it with statistics. It's always that language of uncertainty. I think this is what I'm expecting it, but I'm not saying it absolutely well. Okay, so they're not likely um, to be representative um, of all. New Zealanders. Okay, so it's the idea that you somewhere in there I need that reference to the whole population, that you're understanding that we've got a sample, a population, and it's that representative idea. So in that answer, those are the things that I want you to be able to tell me. Okay, and so that then would get you through to a merit for your reasoning. If you just told me that the opinions are different, then that would be the achieved. But being able to ex connect that representative idea um, for your population. Okay? Right. Cool. So, part C there. So, the final referendum, um, people in New Zealand were asked to choose between these two flags. So, from those five flags that they originally gave us in the first referendum, they chose the one that gave the most votes. And then they did a second referendum and said to all of New Zealanders, right, do you want to keep the New Zealand flag or do you want this one? And people got to vote for those two. So we have general electorates and Māori electorates. And so if you um, are Māori, you can choose whether you um, want to vote under the general electorate or under the Māori electorate. Um, if you're not Māori, you just vote under the general electorate. Okay? So... Not everyone who could vote did so. Okay, not everyone actually turns up on the day and registers their vote. Um, though those that are allowed to vote, we call those eligible voters. So we've got some results here. Okay, and so we've got some results looking at the general electorate, the Māori electorate, and overall. And we want to look for similarities and differences between Māori and general electorates in this referendum. Okay, so. We know they've given us a bit of a hint there already. They've given us this 44% and this 43%. So they've given you a bit of a hint because there's a box in between that's empty. 
So that's our first hint, is let's actually work out this one there because that might be a useful number to calculate. Yep. So let's think about what that is. Percentage vote for change. So that's saying out of everybody in that category, how many people voted for change. So from all of the Māori voters, so they're in total, there are 238,012 Māori voters at that particular time. And from those, the ones that voted for change, well, there was 28,689 that voted. So that's the first thing I'm going to say, is the percentage of for change um, among Māori voters is our 28,689 out of 238,012. And... Is it Awesome. Nice, thank you. Um, so let's go to run mode and we want 28689 over 238 and 12. And that gives us 12%, except multiply that by 100. Um, so that gives me 12. Where are we? Oh, tab. That gives me 12.05%. Okay. All right. So what does that number mean? So that means that over all of the original voters from Maldi, only 12% of total voters who are invited mm. want to change for the Okay. So now, because it says describe the similarities and differences. So if I compare that with the general electorate. Yep. 44% of the general electorate voted for change. So compare that 44% with the 12%. Are they about the same? Are they quite different? Quite different. So that's the first comment that I want you to be able to tell me, is that um, the percentage of Māori voters who wanted change, who wanted to change the flag. <coughs> is much lower than um, in the general electorate, than the, in the general electorate. Okay, that would get me, that's an achieve level statement. Okay, the reason it's not a merit is because I haven't yet given any evidence or justification to back up that statement. So what I now want to do is I want to add in that evidence or justification. So how can I show that Māori voters was lower than the general? Because the percentage of Māori um, wanting change is 12% versus 44%. Yep. So I need that evidence, and that turns it into a merit-level answer, because I've got the evidence to back up. All right. So that talked about a difference. That's one comment. The question said similarities and differences. So I need more comments if I want to get through to my excellence. So what other things can you compare in this table? So the votes were the current flag. Mm -hmm. All of them um, have, they have a majority of the vote. Good, good. So there's a similarity. That for both Māori and general voters, the majority wanted no change. Yep. So that is so we can say one similarity is one similarity is that um, both um, Maori and general voters voted 
and the majority for keeping the flag. Now, is that an achieve level statement or a merit level statement? It's achieved. What do I need to make it into a merit? Evidence. Evidence. Good. So, what's the evidence that I can support it with? So, I could look at, um, there's a number of different ways that I could do it. So, because I'm talking about Māori and um, general, so your votes for no change, so I want to turn that divided by that into a percentage. Um, and then I want to do the Māori divided by the total into a percentage as well and find those two percentages. Yep. Um, so that would be my evidence that I want to support that. And you could do it as, as a percentage or you can actually leave it as fractions. I'm quite happy with that being fraction. It's still numerical evidence. Okay. So I can just say in brackets, um, general is 1121. Um, 618 out of 1208. No, hang on. Oh, no, it's not out of 1208, is it? No, naughty me. It's not out of 1208. What should it be out of? It should be out of the Māori or out of the general voters. So it should be the 1120 out of the eligible voters and then the Māori out of the Māori voters. Yep. All right, so that's out of... 2905. Oh, ah, there we go. 116 um, versus the Māori, which is 87084 out of 238012. Okay, now that I've got two statements. That gets me, with evidence, that gets me through to my excellence. Okay? Um, that isn't obviously the only things that I could comment on. What are some of the other things that you could comment on? If I look at the data, what other things there are there to notice? Absolutely. We could look at how many people actually voted what percentage of people actually voted from those eligible. So we could look at comparing um, the eligible voters versus the total voters. How many actually turned up and voted on the day? 10%? 100%? Is that representative? There's that idea again. Is that going to be representative of all New Zealanders? Yeah. So that's another thing that we could compare. What else could you compare? Good, and we could think it. We could you could tell me about how people who didn't vote in the election, they might have a different opinion to those that did. So therefore, again, it's coming back to that idea of representative. Is the data representative? Is this representative of all opinions? Okay, so we can talk about how people who didn't vote might think differently. We could compare the size of the group. So I could compare how many um, Maori voters there are versus general voters and say should they be treated as a 50-50 okay there's different opinions about this across New Zealand so there's a number of different comments that you could make one comment just straight comment achieved one comment with justification merit two comments with justification excellence yeah good awesome so that is question one so that's probability all right, let's go now and have a look at some data. All right, so the first thing we need to do when we look at data, oh, hang on, that's question B, where's question A gone? Um, first thing when we look at data is to decide what kind of data it is, and therefore what kind of analysis do I need to do. So I'm not even going to read the question. I'm going to go straight to that graph. What kind of graph is that? Fox and whisker? Dot plot. So what kind of analysis is this? Is this time series, bivariate, or multivariate? It's multivariate, the very first topic that we did at the beginning of the year. All right, so that's my first thing I do. I'm not even thinking about the data at it at all, as I'm just going, well, this is multivariate data. And I know when I've got multivariate data, there are three main parts of the analysis. Shape, center, and spread. 
Okay, so those are the first three things I need to think about. And then in terms of the conclusion for that, I need to think about making the call. Okay, and looking whether or not the medians inside or outside the boxes. All right. So I know, as soon as I see that graph, I know I need to write that stuff down. So if you get to a question like this, and you have not written somewhere, and one answer to a question, the shape seem to spread, go back and write it down somewhere. Even if it's answered the wrong question, we can go and mark it because you've shown an understanding of what this graph is. All right. So even if you put it in the wrong place, make sure it's written down somewhere. Okay. So the very first question there. So this is talking about um, weeks on the billboard to, um, by song, and it's comparing the Beatles with the Rolling Stones. So there's our two groups: the Beatles and our Rolling Stones. And the first question is just being able to read information off the graph. So they want to know how many songs were on the charts for only one week. Okay, so let me just look at that. So it's talking about songs by Rolling Stones. Okay, on the charts for only one week. Where am I going to find that one week on the graph? On the axis down here. So there's our one week, and we're talking about our Rolling Stones. So we're talking about this set of data. So how many songs were there for one week? Just one. Yep, so that first one is just literally reading off the graph. Okay, so how many songs? One song. And it's because it's a nice straightforward answer, that's a U. All right, achieve level skill, just being able to read off the graph. Okay, now we'll go and do some more with that data. So the second one says, compare the number of weeks that they were in chart. And they've given us the hint, which they don't always do. Okay, they don't always give you this hint. Sometimes they just say, discuss features. And they expect you to know this type of graph means shape center spread. All right. So, center. Well, what's the measure of center that we're going to use? Median. Good. So I've got a median here for the Beatles of nine weeks and a median there of ten. So that's our line in the middle here. Here's our medians. So tell me about those medians. Are they the same? Is one bigger? Which one's bigger? Rolling Stones. How much bigger is it? By one week. Yep. So we've got nine and ten. Yep. So the median is for the Rolling Stones is bigger by one week. That's the comparative because it has to be a comparative sentence. If you just say the median is nine weeks and the median is ten weeks for the groups, that's not going to get you anywhere. It has to be a comparative sentence. So that's what we need to be able to say. Um, is we are going to say over here that the median um, number of weeks, because it's always going to be in context of songs by the Rolling Stones. Is it the Rolling Stones that's bigger? Yep, the Rolling Stones is bigger. So the median number of weeks of songs by the Rolling Stones is more than the Beatles by one week. <coughs> okay, One feature, one sentence, it's a comparative sentence, I'm comparing the medians, um, that is only achieved. What do I need to do to make it into a merit? Evidence, justify it. So what's my evidence? How did I come up with this one week? The medians. Good. So then we're going to write and say because the median number of weeks for the Rolling Stones is 10 weeks and the Beatles is 9 weeks. All right, so that's my justification that I need for my merit. That's the centre. What are the other features we want to talk about? Spread and shape. Okay, so tell me what the different shapes are. What shapes do you remember? Right skewed, left skewed, binomial, bimodal, uniform, normal distribution. Good, those are the main ones. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to look at the graph and figure out which shape they are. Okay, so 
I am going to do my lovely little drawing over the oh, over the top there and a little drawing over the top there. God, that's terrible drawings. Let's let, let's try that one again. There we go. That looks better. Okay. What I don't want to see you doing is doing a graph that looks like this. You'd be surprised how many people give me skyscraper graphs. I don't want the detail. I just literally quick swish over the top. I want the general pattern, not a specific pattern, a general pattern. So, beetles. What shape is that? Right skewed. How do you know? The longer tail on that right hand side. Good, so we know that that's right skewed. And what about the Rolling Stones? Yeah, approximately normal. Okay. So being able to write a comparative sentence saying that the shapes of these are different, that the shape of the beetles is right skewed, which is different from the beetles, which is normally distributed, that would be my first sentence, my achieved. For my merit, I would need to justify it. So how do I justify that it's right skewed? How do I show that? The tail on the right hand side, what else would I talk about? Yep, so we're going to look at how many peaks we've got in the data. Yep, and whether it's symmetric. So those three key ideas for justifying is looking at the number of peaks, looking at whether it is symmetric, um, and looking at the tails, whether the tails are similar on both sides. So those are the three ideas I want you to be able to tell me um, when we justify it. So if we've got right skewed, is it symmetric? No. How many peaks does it have? One peak. Are the tails on the left and right the same? No, the tail on the right is much longer. Good. So normal distribution, is it symmetric? Does it have, how many peaks does it have? And tell me about the tails. Pretty much the same. Good. So that's what I want to write a comment about. Um, Okay, so I'm going to, so now I'm going to talk about the shape. And so I'm going to say for the shape that, um, the shape of, and I'm always going back to the data, of time on the charts for the Beatles is right skewed because... Um, it has one peak, is not symmetric, and the tail on the right is longer. Then I need another sentence for the Rolling stones, but it needs to be a comparison. So is the rolling stone shape the same or different? Different. So I need to say that. Um, the shape of time on the charts for the rolling stones is different and is approximately normal because it has one peak is roughly symmetrical and the tails are similar. Okay, so two comments with justification that gets me through to a Merido ball. So one comment, so one of the features stated comparatively is achieved. Two comments justified gets you your merit. Three comments justified and telling me a story gets you through to the excellence. Okay, so we've done the shape, we've done the centre. What's the other feature we need? The spread. 
Okay, so when we're looking at the spread, what are we comparing? In the interquartile range particularly, that's the one we want to be able to see, is the interquartile range. All right. The range as a concept is not at the high enough curriculum level for us to give you any credit for it. All right. So you need to talk about the interquartile range. All right. So what I want to do is I want to look at my lovely graphs. Uh, and oh, I am just going to oh, come here. Oh, you can just use the Oh, good, okay. So what I want to do is I want to compare how wide um, this graph, this spread here is with how wide that spread there is. I'm just looking at the width of those boxes, all right? That's my interquartile range. So do they look roughly the same? Does one look a lot bigger than the other? Notice that word a lot that I used. I'm not interested in small differences. I'm looking at the big picture. Do those widths look similar? And I would say that they look to me fairly similar. So that's what my comment needs to be. So the spread of the middle 50% of the data for them is approximately the same, is about similar. Okay? Justifying it, I would calculate the interquartile range. Now, do you remember the formula for interquartile range? Upper quartile minus lower quartile. Yep, so then I could go to my Beatles one, so that's got an upper quartile of 11 and a lower quartile of 6, so that would have an interquartile range of 11, take away 6, which is 5. For my Rolling Stones, it's going to be an upper quartile of 13, take away a lower quartile of 8. 13 take away 8 is 5. So they are exactly the same. Yep. So that's what I want. So that's the evidence being able to give me the interquarter range. That's the evidence that I need to be able to justify it. All right. So we want to write a sentence saying that the spread of time on the charts for both the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. is the same because the interquartile range for the Beatles is 5 and the interquartile range for the Rolling Stones is 5. Alright, so that's a third sentence, justified. I haven't got to my excellence yet because now I need to tell the story. I need to put all of this information together and think about the data. The data is about how much time they spend on the charts. Yeah. Does it appear that they are spending similar or different amounts of times on the charts? Similar. Because those medians are about the same, the interquartile range is about the same. Yeah, the, spread, the shape's a little bit different, but the medians and, and, and interquartal ranges are quite similar. Yeah. Why would that be? What does that mean? It means that they're both pretty equally popular. Yeah? They've both got popular songs that have been on the charts for similar amounts of time. And that's all I want to be able to say. That's the story, is that these two groups are, are both popular groups. All right? That's my story behind the data. Okay? So that's what I want for the excellence, is that both groups appear to be to be um, similar in their popularity. Cool. That now gets me through to excellence. Three features, justified, and the story. Okay. One comparative achieved, two comparative with justification merit, Three, comparative with justification and the story is my excellence. Okay. Then I've done shape centre spread, haven't yet done a conclusion. So this next question, 1C, is there enough evidence to say that one of them stays in the charts longer? 
Okay, notice that word tend, magic word. That means the central tendency. Yep. So how do I tell whether they, one tends to be bigger than the other? Looking at the medians. So if I was to draw the median, if I draw this median going down, it's inside the box. If I draw this median going up, it's inside the box. Both of those are inside the box. What does that mean? Can't make the call. Those medians are really close together. Can't make the call. So is there enough evidence? No, there's not. Yeah. So, but I want to say why. And remember, it's talking about give statistical reasons for your answer. I'm looking for that reasoning behind it. Okay, so we're going to say, I can't make the call. that um, songs, I'm just going straight back to the wording of it now, songs by the Rolling Stones tend to stay in the charts longer. I'm just using literally the wording given above. Then songs by the Beatles. because this is the part that I need. Okay, so being able to make that call, like saying I can't make the call, or you could have said there isn't enough evidence, that would have been fine too, either of those wordings, that would get you through to your achieved. So just being able to give me that much, oh, just being able to give me that much there would give you the achieved. Being able to go on and give me the reasoning gets us through to a merit. So why, how do we know whether we could make the call? Both the medians were inside each other's boxes. Yep. So because both medians um, were inside each other's boxes. All right, that gets you through to your merit. It's being able to give me the reasons. We won't get through the whole exam, that's all right. We'll hopefully get through one more question. So what I've got now is I have, this is looking at the relationship between the peak position of a song on the chart and how long it was in the charts. So peak position, um, if you have the peak position of one, that means you're top of the charts. Okay, so we've got a scatter graph. What can you tell me about scatter graphs? What type of analysis do I want to do? We need to know the direction, the strength, and the trend. Yep, so this is a bivariate data. So as soon as we see bivariate, we need to think trend. So is it linear or nonlinear? Does it, uh, does it look like a straight line or a curve? Um, what direction is it? Okay, so is it going up? Is it going down? Positive, negative? Um, and the strength of the relationship. Okay, so is it strong, moderate, or weak, or none? Okay. All right, so in order to see that, what I would love you guys to be doing um, is I, and this, I still draw this, I draw a line hitting the tops of the data and a line hitting the bottom parts of the data. Because what that does is it draws my eyes to the pattern. I want to see the pattern. Yep. Tell me about that pattern. Does it look like a straight line or a curve? Good. So that's our first step. This is a curve. Then tell me, is it positive or negative? Is it going upwards or downwards? It's going downwards. So that is a negative pattern. And is it strong, moderate or weak? Moderate. It's definitely not strong. Yep. And I wouldn't say weak because part of it is quite narrow, this top part here. This is quite narrow here. It gets a lot wider here, um, but goes a bit narrow down there again. 
So I wouldn't accept wheat because overall it's not that. I would accept either moderate or moderately wheat. All right, so as long as you can go all the way to wheat, I'd accept moderately wheat or moderate. Okay, now I need to write that in a sentence in context, and that will get me through to my achieved. What do I need to do to get to a merit? Justify it. So how do I justify it being a curve? What's the difference between a curve and a straight line? Tell me about the gradient of a straight line. It's a constant gradient, isn't it? It's the same gradient. Walking up a set of stairs and going up to the library, those sets of stairs going up the same size set of stairs. The whole thing is just constant slope, steady slope. Whereas a curve, think about going down a slide. Yep. Steep in one part, um, not so steep in other parts. So the gradient is changing. Yep. That's how I justify it, is by saying the gradient or the slope is changing versus being pretty steady. Okay? Negative. How do I justify that it's negative? Good. It's always to justify that negative, it's always as your x variable increases, as your y variable going up or down, in this case, it is going down. As your number of weeks on the chart increases, the time, the peak position is decreasing. Yep, that's the sentence I want justifying. As the x variable increases, the y variable decreases. And the last one, moderate. How do you justify moderate? Looking at the amount of scatter. Okay, there is a moderate amount. If I had to fit a line, a bit trend line through the middle, there's a moderate amount of scatter around that. Okay, there's a moderate amount of scatter around that best fit line through the middle. Okay, now that's only going to get me to a merit. What do I need to do for excellence? Tell the story. So, what's the story behind this? Mm. So we know peak position. What's the best position on the charts? One. Okay, so if I've got a peak position of one, so peak position of one is down here, those values, the number of weeks is quite high. Whereas where I've got peak positions of 100, they don't spend as many weeks on the charts. So the longer something spends on the charts, the higher its peak position. That's the story. All right? The more popular the song is, the longer it's going to spend on the charts, therefore the lower its peak position. Yeah? All right, and I know I haven't written up those sentences. I'm going to assume that you guys can write those sentences up because we're running out of time. But that's what I would want to see for my excellence. Okay, now what I haven't done is there is, I've got another question there on um, some time series data. Um, so what I might do is I'll arrange another tutorial next week um, and I'll finish going through this exam next week with you guys. Okay, good stuff guys, well done.